Welcome to the Role Playing History Podcast YouTube channel. I'm Wayne Davis, and much like on the podcast, I'm going to be your guide for today's tour. The difference is, you can, unlike John Cena, who you can't see, you can see me. You can actually see my ugly mug and, and my loud friggin' shirt. And we are doing a supplement to this week's podcast about the game Deadlands. Now, you don't have to have actually listened to this week's podcast to, to understand everything I'm going to talk about here. It would help. Uh, but otherwise, because what's going to happen is it's that podcast is going to drop on this feed next week. By then, you will have seen this when it dropped, and you may have forgotten about this. So if you want to take a second to go listen to that before we get to this, go ahead and do that. You're not going to offend me. Trust me, it takes a lot to offend me. Now, in the podcast, we went through and we discussed the history of the game. And we, we got, I got down into some of the minutiae of the game. I'm not going to do all that shit here. I'm just not. It takes too much time. I don't want to repeat it. But there's a couple of things that I do need to make sure that we understand. Because I am a history guy. After all, we're calling the podcast Role-Playing History. So I'd be remiss if I didn't mention it. Shane Lacey Hensley published the game Deadlands in 1996 for his Pinnacle, Pinnacle Entertainment Group. And he did it because he really had an idea for a zombies and cowboys kind of a game. And so that's where Deadlands came from. Now, in 1996, you would have gotten, and I'm looking down because I'm wanting to grab this, and i got to back things up. And I know it's a reverse image. I'm sorry. I'm doing this on my phone. I'm having audio video problems on my computer and don't have time to work it out for you guys to see it. But this, this is what the original version of the game book looked like. And I'm showing you the thickness because I'm going to get back to that in a second. But, I mean, it bright color, really good pictures. It was really, really cool. I'm dropping that on the floor. That's why you're hearing. I'm going to do this. That is the Marshall's Handbook. If I can get my fingers out of the way, you can see it. Marshall's Handbook. Again, the thickness. So that's, that's what came out in 1996. That was what we started playing this game on. That's what I started playing this game on. Yes, you can find those used. They've been out of print for about 20 years. You're not going to find those anywhere in a print version anymore unless they're used. You can go to Pinnacle's website and get PDF versions on it. I'm going to put that down in the little info box down below. Now, in 2017, Shane Lacey Hensley decided he was going to do a Kickstarter because it was the 20th anniversary of Deadlands. And we got this. Really awesome. Thick as hell. I mean, you take those other two books and put it together, and it's going to equal this. And hardcover, right out of the box. So that's cool. I've cracked it to read it, but I haven't actually used it since I got it. Jesus, has it been four years ago? Now, I guess I haven't played Deadlands in four years, but to quote River Song, spoilers, I am going to use that book for Deadlands for the campaign I run after I wrap up my D&D stuff. But I got a long way to go on that, so if you're one of my players and you're watching, don't flip your shit. We still got a ways to go. I haven't finished killing all of your characters yet. Anyway, so when I was talking about uh, the podcast, I was talking about Deadlands. We were talking about needing playing cards, because it's cool. Playing cards are used for initiative. Uh, hex slingers use them. You actually use them in character development. Now, when you get cards, and I was looking for a deck of cards before I hit record, and I just didn't have any, which kind of sucks for me, but um, you can go with just like the dollar store cards. There's not a problem with that, as long as you leave the jokers in. And I'll get to why you need to leave the jokers in in a minute. Uh, or you can do what I did, and, and I have the cards packed away someplace. I got to find them. I guess I have time, but I got to find them. You can actually find printings of cards that kind of have a, an Old West feel to them. So like you'd be playing in an old Wild West saloon playing cards. That would be what these would look like. And I bought a couple of decks of those to use for my game. Doesn't, doesn't really matter whether, like you said, you buy the 50 cent cards or like $4 a pack card. However, something that I didn't mention in the podcast that I do want to make sure I mention here, if you're going to play Deadlands, you need a communal deck of cards for everybody to use because you use them for initiative. Um, you're going to need a deck of cards for each hex slinger in the party. So each hex slinger needs their own cards. And hell, you can tell them buy their own cards if you want. That's fine. The the um, the marshal, that's the GM in this game, is going to need at least one deck, if not two of their own. So there's two more. So really, you're looking at if one person's going to buy them, I'd say buy a half a dozen packs. So go to the dollar store, buy a half a dozen pack of cards, and 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 be done with it. Probably spend a whole three dollars. I don't know. However you do it, go ahead and do it. 
Something else that's big, and I actually do have some of these, is fate chips. Now, I talk about fate chips in the podcast a little bit, um, that they're used kind of like experience points, but you can you can use these bad boys too um, to, to add dice to a roll, to eliminate a, a negative damage roll for all kinds of other things. And they don't have to be chips. You can use, it even says in the book, you can use stones, you can use little chits, you can use whatever you want. But I mean, we're already using poker cards. Let's do poker chips. And you don't have to, by the way, these are, you hear them hit, they're, they're pretty solid. These are, these are baked clay. I got a, a box of these. It was a professional looking latch case. I think it was like 15 bucks for that. And it came with a couple deck of cards. You don't have to spend that much. Again, while you're at the dollar store getting your chips, Get the plastic ones. Get the cheap plastic ones. You need the the black, uh, the blue, and the green. There might be the red and the black and the green. But anyway, you, you just you need the three colors. Book tells you how many you need. The reason why I use the plastic when I first ran, I used the plastic. Here's the problem with the plastic. People want to play with their chips at the table. You give a gamer something to play with, and they're gonna play with it. They want to do Val Kilmer and Real Genius and Tombstone and flip it through their fingers. No, I can't do that. But they're gonna want to do that. And they get dropped. They'll fall on the floor. Uh, they get thrown. They friggin' break. Plastic ones will. Clay ones, they're, they're built to be a little more brutal with. So I see it as an investment. I spent a few more dollars up front. I should only have to buy these bad boys once. But again, do what you want. Now, this is where, this is where I'm going to wind up busting myself because the players have to do a, a blind draw at the beginning of the session to pick their chips and you tell them how many. Well, what do they blind draw from? I mean, I guess if you were going to be like period authentic, you'd get yourself like maybe a little chest or maybe like a vintage area uh, spittoon. Clean, of course. You know, anybody picking tobacco juice out of there. And you maybe do something like that. I didn't do that. I'll tell you what I did in a minute. You're going to be pissed. You could do, I mean, use a brown paper, a brown paper bag. Don't use plastic. You can see through that shit. It's supposed to be a blind draw. They're not supposed to be able to see the colors that they're picking. So brown paper bag... A reusable paper sack. I mean, hell, if you got an empty purse, use that. Or an empty backpack, you can use that. You want to see what I used? Because I was in a hurry, and I'm a shit at making decisions sometimes. Tupperware. Hey, don't hate me, okay? I was doing the best I could do. I'm just trying to teach you how not to make the same bad decisions that I made. But yeah, I mean, you know, throw those in there. Throw the lid on, shake it up, make people blind drop. Now, at the end of a session... Players can turn these in and they can get um, bounty points and use bounty points like experience points. So you can make character improvements. Bounty points can also be awarded by the marshal if they feel like it, just for whatever. There's also something called a hindrance that you can take at player creation. And, and basically, if you play the hindrance, the marshal can award you with a chip, which you can then cash in. And they've got stuff on there like, um, like big britches and big mouth. But hell, in my group, every one of my players would take Big Mouth. And then they would be expecting me to hand these out like bubblegum. No. If you're going to take Big Mouth, that has to actually play into the story, not be a smartass. And you know who I'm talking about. Huh. Anyway, do it how you feel like you need to do it. And, and I wanted the opportunity to do a little show and tell. So I, I did a little show and tell. And I look, I, I said on the podcast, this wasn't going to be a podcast length, like 30 minutes. However, and as I'm kind of getting into the wrap here, I do want to mention is I'm working on some full length YouTube only stuff coming in the future. I've been talking to a lot of folks on Twitter about different ideas for stuff that we can do that, that works better here than, than on the podcast. And I can tell you coming up, I don't know when, I'm, I'm not going to put myself on any kind of uh, any kind of rush by giving you a specific, but coming up, it'll be before the end of 2021. I'm working on a piece about dice. And I'm going to put that here because frankly, 30 minutes of just me talking about dice and not actually being able to hold dice up like I've been holding a poker chips, that, that sucks. So I'd like to be able to do a little visual. So I am going to do that one. I'm also open to suggestions. So if you go down into the info box down there and uh, hit me up on, on one of those places that you can hit me up on, email's preferable, but hit me up wherever you're most comfortable. If you've got an idea for something that would be a great YouTube exclusive, I'll think about it. Chances are pretty good I'm going to probably do it because when I get suggestions for things, I do them. Now, I need to send some shout-outs. I, I need to, first off, shout-out my wife who is continuing to tolerate the... 
loud ass shirts and and all the stuff that I do to try to make this podcast and these YouTube channels successful. I appreciate her patience, honey. I love you. And I love all you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Whether you get the podcast live when it drops, whether you wait for it, excuse me, right here on YouTube, wherever you get it. I appreciate you. I love you. We're going to make this shit grow. We're going to come up with some more things to do. And maybe cross fingers, maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe I can turn this into my full-time gig and we can do some more stuff. Like maybe a live stream game. I would love to do a Deadlands live stream. I've got the players in mind for it right now, but I'd need money because I need a rig. I don't know. We'll think about it. So that's it for this. I'm Wayne Davis. Till next time, your role-playing history.